Greetings, fellow scribes! Welcome back to the Archive! This week's discussion is the fifth and final portion of my series on Werewolf the Apocalypse, focusing on the Garou Nation. This week I will be putting the focus on the First Change and the Rite of Passage, the two most defining moments for an early Garou's life. The First Change being when they come into their own as a guru, whether it be from Hamid or Lupus Stock or Metis, and the rite of passage being when they are acknowledged as no longer being a cub, but being a full guru with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities that that entails. So, sit back. Relax and enjoy as we discuss this most important element of Garu society. Despite what the legendary would have you believe, one does not become a werewolf by surviving an attack, or being bitten by a werewolf, or anything like that. One becomes a werewolf by your ancestry, by your bloodline, by being born to be a werewolf. This destiny starts you on the irrevocable track towards your first change. And where does this start? This starts at birth, actually. There are signs Guru can look for that will tell them when a child is bred true or not. That's not where the process starts. The process starts with what is at the core of every guru's being. The blessing from Luna that sometimes the worm uses to get them to do unspeakable things. This core ability, this core essence of the guru is called rage. And you can think of it as a fire deep inside the guru. They get angry, it fans the flames. Really, though, any sort of passion is represented by rage. The more rage, the more extremes of anger, lust, love, joy, sadness a guru will feel. But rage has another aspect to it. Werewolves are predators. And even the lowest rage werewolf, the ragabashes, will emanate this rage around them in a way that others can sense. What this means is those who are born among lupus, the other members of the pack are going to shun them. They're going to treat them like an omega until things happen. While the those born on humans Maybe they're going to be the bullies. Maybe they're going to be picked on mercilessly. Maybe people are just going to just feel this inexplicable need to shove them as they walk down a hallway, or slash their car's tires, or in other ways treat them horribly. Maybe people will avoid them because this sense of a predator amongst them is just subconsciously pricked in the minds of most people. Either way, for both Lupus and Hamid Guru, their early life tends to be one of loneliness. They are not accepted, bullied, pushed around by the rest of their peers. 
And this just kind of gradually, this this abuse just kind of gradually starts building in them over time, over the years. And, you know, that that happens. Now, a little bit before they're going to go through the first change, sometimes up to a year, sometimes, lo sometimes longer, sometimes less, they start having dreams. These dreams will usually be, for humans, it will be running as a wolf or hunting like a wolf. For lupus, the dreams aren't really that well mentioned in any of the texts, but I would assume that they're involving walking as a human. I could be wrong on that. As I said, I've never actually read a description of these in any of the stories told in the various source books over the years about a first change or about the characters coming up to them. But one thing is, at some level, by this point, every guru knows that they are different, knows that there is something different about them. For medicine, of course, it's because they know what they are, and are being taught about it. For the humans and the Hamid and Lupus guru, it's just they don't fit in. And then something happens. Ultimately, something happens. This could be you know, someone getting, finally getting beaten up by too many people. This could be, you know, they see someone attack someone they care about. Just anything. Some event that causes them in one moment to lose control of any of that rage, to just snap. And then they go into a frenzy. Their first change, and most first changes, are are moments of blood and death and carnage. And they don't remember it. The guru might see something like, say, someone smacks his human girlfriend and he snaps. And the next thing he knows, maybe the, maybe the girlfriend's fine, maybe she's not, but definitely the person who smacked her is dead, torn to bits. Maybe, actually most often, if there were other people around, a good chunk of them are dead. And here you'll have the guru coming out of this, having shifted back to Hyamid, back to their breed form, staring at this aftermath of blood and death, most likely covered in the blood of the people that they just slaughtered. And they have to deal with that. If they're lucky, a kin fetch, a spirit bound to watch them, has alerted other guru to their shifting, to their first change. And so 
they're going to be found quickly and everything made right. For some tribes, this is actually a involved process. For others, it's not really gone into. I mean, honestly, the only tribe we have an actual description in their tribe books for how they handle the immediate first change is the glass walkers. And that's a that first 48 hours they pulled the new cub into a secure place trying to get him to calm down as he's surrounded by people all dialing, setting up the cover-ups, etc., etc., etc. You know, ma making the video footage disappear and all that. I will assume most other tribes do something similar. But, again, first changes that that initial aftermath, again, doesn't get a lot of coverage in the text, in the source books. But this is still the most important moment of a guru's life. Because this is the moment that they stop being a human or wolf and become a full-fledged guru. And from this moment, they will be able to learn to shapeshift, learn to change their forms, learn gifts, all that. Because this is the point where everything changes for them. Now then, they will undergo a period, goes by different names for different tribes. I generally prefer the term fostering, where they are trained in the ways of the group, where they are taught the culture, they are taught the laws of the guru, and all that. The, you know, the stories, the heritage, especially if there's someone who's definitely going to be going into the tribe of their lineage. But... Beyond that, this period of time is when they learn to control their rage, when they learn to control their shape-shifting. And in many cases, this is when they're going to learn their first gifts. Because that's going to be part of the process of teaching them guru culture. It's going to be teaching them how to bargain with a spirit for its first gift. How, how to conduct shimmage with spirits. And then, once they've reached a certain point of mastery, a basic understanding of all this, comes the rite of passage. Some tribes do solo rites of passage, but many prefer to do a pack rite of passage, where they will get several cubs who have all gone through their first change at about the same time, and they will be given a task. Generally, a more experienced guru will go with them to observe, pull their arses out of the fire if things get too bad, or if the task that the elders had assigned to them turns out to not be what they were expecting. And this is just a standard thing. They need to make sure there's someone there, because every guru is precious. Because they are so few of them. And they are constantly dying in battle. They have to make sure to do as much as they can to try and keep these new cubs alive. And the rite of passage is they conduct this mission. They conduct this task. 
and when they succeed it, they come back, and from this, they generally get their first name among the Guru. Guru use a process of deed names. Now, each tribe has different ways of doing its deed names. But, in essence, a Guru's name is always going to be important to them. You know, a great example is one of the canon characters. Evan heals the past. He is a Wendigo who is basically trying to forge the rifts, heal the rifts between the Native American tribes like the Wendigo and the Western tribes called by you know, the Pure Lands tribes the Wormcomers. But he's trying to heal that rift and that's the origin, that's the importance of his name. And his name came from his rite of passage where he had to accept and find his history and what his destiny and purpose was. Others, their names aren't quite like that. No, I have heard various different names, but no, like the Black Furies, they'll generally pick their names relating to Greek mythology. The Fianna will most often pick something out of Scottish or Irish mythology around them. And I say picks mostly because it's the name, the core essence of what the name is, is conveyed by the spirits who observe the rite of passage. But the actual wording of it is what's going to be defined by the new guru. And thus, with their name, they are a full member of guru society. They have all the rights, rights to seek instruction on, on rituals and gifts, to use the bon, to gain access to the areas of the cairn that they are allowed access to, and they have all the responsibilities, protecting the cairn, doing missions for the elders, F fighting the worm wherever it dwells. And that's really the core of it. That this whole process, first change to rite of passage, is the process by which someone goes from, I was human, to, I am a warrior for Gaia. So with that, I will conclude this series. I look forward to seeing you with my next videos. I will most likely be taking a look at some obscure game next, because I have not done that in a few weeks. In fact, I think I will be covering the Dark Eye for the next series, or next video. So, until then, I wish you all good luck. I will see you then. Have fun, and keep gaming.